So in this video, we're going to look at the uh, financial innovation and the growth of the shadow banking system. As we just discussed in general, how our banking system looks like and the history of this development. So in this video, we're going to focus on the financial innovation. Why? Uh, because as the development of the economy, if the uh, commercial bank only rely on borrowing, lending, and the differences of interest rate uh, to make money, they will notice that uh, they might have to file bankruptcy themselves. So in order to survive, to make be more profitable, and uh, the financial commercial banks start to be very innovative. So that's what we talk about the financial innovation. So when we talk about financial innovation, we have to talk about the shadow banking system. So so what is shadowing banking system means? So if you think about borrowing lending, so the bank goes through their own system, uh, got the, the uh, money who have some the people who have actual money, uh, they receive their deposit and then, then they lend it out. But when we talk about the shadow banking system, uh, that is means the bank lending uh, will, uh, is being replaced by lending via the securities market with the uh, involvement of a number of the different financial institutions. That means borrowing lending is not that direct anymore. Instead, the commercial bank actually gonna wait, work with the other uh, financial uh, player on the financial market to make this uh, transaction. So this is called a shadow banking system. And so let's look at uh, uh, what kind of, um, of um, uh, reason to drive the financial uh, institution to be financial innovation. The answer is pretty straightforward. Profit. So profit is the main, uh, main reason to drive the financial uh, institution to have this kind of financial innovation. So a change in the financial environment will stimulate stimulate a search by financial institutions for innovations that are likely to be profitable. So therefore, uh, starting from 1960s, you know, the commercial banks started looking for the uh, using the financial engineering method and to create a new a service opportunity to the client and you know, finding a new method to create a new financial instrument to help the bank make money. So first, in order to respond in demand condition, so the demand for the loan is uh, not as much as before, uh, as uh, the time before 1960s. And so what happened is they can uh, be creative in terms of interest rate volatility. So for instance, uh, the bank can offer an adjustable rate mortgage. So if you have a mortgage before, or if you're going to have a mortgage in the future, you will notice that by default, the customer will get the uh, fixed, uh, the, uh, the non, the fixed interest rate, fixed interest rate. However, some, uh, but that exposed the bank to the potential risks because let's say your interest rate is three point three percent. So the banks. Um, banks got the money lending to, uh, lending to you. So let's see the money they got from the people who deposit the check there. So they pay the people who deposit the check 2%. So they give you 3%. So they make 1% the interest rate. So however, the Federal Reserve might adjust the interest rate. So if the Federal Reserve raised the interest rate, so the bank has to increase their interest rate for the saving account. So let's say they raise to four uh, Federal Reserve after Federal Reserve reserve increase interest rate, and then the uh, the uh, the saving accounts interest rate goes up to four percent. So they uh, they get the money by paying four percent, but they lend you money paying only three percent. So then what's happened is they actually lose one percent. So obviously, if that's happening, expose the um, bank to the unnecessary risk. So how can you they avoid it? So they can offer the adjustable rate mortgage, but also they understand that. Some consumer may don't like this kind of risk. So if the fixed rate three percent, if the adjustable mortgage rate is also three percent, so nobody gonna borrow money by using the adjustable rate mortgage. So what would be the best solution? So they offer um, lower initial interest rate. Let's say the fixed rate will be three percent, and then the adjustable rate mortgage will be one percent. So but it will floating tracking on how the other interest rate works. So this by using this method, it's limited the uh, interest rate, uh, interest risk to the uh, the bank. So this is one financial innovation. Another financial innovation is called the financial derivative, and uh, such as the futures, uh, uh, soybean future, corn future, exchanging futures. So they're using the futures market 
to creating the futures market. So the reason they're creating those futures, because the futures can be used to hedging the spot market. So they are creating the new way to hedging the interest rate risk. And so uh, the payoff are linked to the previous issue that the securities. And so those are the two innovation corresponding to the changes in the demand condition on the financial market. And so how about the respond in the supply condition? So the on the supply changes uh, over time is usually created by the um, in, uh, the technology changes. So nowadays uh, people want to be have a very convenient uh, fin financing process. So how the bank should respond to that change? So everything going so fast and the time is value. So to respond to the changes in the supply condition, the banks start to creating this kind of convenient payment system, such as creating a bank credit card, bank uh, debit card. So now if you go to the store, you don't even need to uh, withdraw the cash from the bank and use the cash to pay the merchandise. You can actually very easily just swipe your credit card or bank card. So using this kind of the in uh, financial innovation improve the uh, efficiency of the transaction, lower the transaction cost, and also the all the big banks, even local uh, banks, have their online banking system. So this kind of called a uh, uh, innovation called electronic banking. Again, this kind of innovation is responding to the needs from the consumer. They want the transaction going fast, reducing the transaction cost, and also. Um, Bank also creating the junk bond. So the junk bond. So that's is the uh, the. If you think about junk bond, we may, we may in the previous lecture we mentioned that only the big uh, reputable corporation, uh, they will be able to issue the bond, uh, and then because they are have low risk to uh, to be default. And however, for some new corporation, so new small companies. So if they have a potential, since they don't have histories, they just started, so they might not have that luxury to issue their bond, but they do need that money to start a business. So what they can do, so they can turn to the bank saying they want to issue a bond, but those bonds will consider a junk bond because they have very high risk to default, but how to compensate that uh, high risk to the uh, to the bar on the buyers. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna pay very very high interest rate. So which means uh, the the uh, the uh, the bank actually able to uh, get a more service fee from issuing this junk bond. So this is a creation because as I said, uh, uh, the demand side is lower. But if you are able to create using the uh, this new method to explore in the new market and you create a profit for the banks, and also the bank can issue the cert commercial paper market. So it, only the big company or big bank can issue this kind of uh, uh, money market instrument. And so it's issuing for to people who have actual money. They allow them to collect the money, to use the money to do the investment. So these are the, uh, inform, uh, the innovation responding to the supply changes. And another change is called a securitization. And so the, the reason we can have this securitization is because the development of the shadow banking system. As I mentioned about the shadow banking system is that when when we talk about borrowing the lending, it is not directly go uh, only go not it is not only go through the commercial banks, but the commercial bank also will work with the players on the security market, security market. So what is securitization? So securitization is to transform other uh, otherwise illiquid illiquid financial asset into marketable capital market securities. So if you think about when a bank lending the money to you to buy a house, so you own, you purchase a mortgage, so the mortgage becomes an asset to the bank. However, you know that uh, the bank won't be able to get money until the end, uh, uh, all the money back. Uh, until the end of the mortgage, right? So initially, maybe every month you pay eight hundred dollars, and then so every year they only collect about uh, uh, ten thousand dollars, right? About uh, uh, ten thousand dollars. But for the bank, uh, you borrow for thirty years, so that's not enough money for them to run. So basically, uh, it's a very illiquid asset for the bank. So what can they do? So they will do is they are repackaging them and uh, working with the security companies and then separate it into different small pieces and then sell on the monetary markets. So in that case, they transfer this kind of illiquid asset become very liquid asset. So this method is called a secur securitization. And so securitization play an especially 
a prominent role in development of the submarine mortgage market in the mid 2000. Why? Because as I said, it's a basically uh, some subprime mortgage market is example of the securitization uh, because initially the commercial bank lend money to the loan uh, to the borrower to the homeowners and then they got uh, this mortgage as their asset and then they work with the investment bank the investment bank will combine a bunch of the mortgage together and then separate into small packages and sell it on the commercial uh, on the uh, on the market that monetary market. So you can see during this whole process, the commercial bank is not the only one involved in this transaction. Actually, it's the commercial bank, investment bank, and in the capital market and in the monetary market. That's why this whole process we call the shadow banking system. Like the commercial bank start to working with the, um, the, big, uh, the main players on the security market. And then the collaboration between this uh, among those uh, commercial insti uh, financial institutions. So, so this is the innovation. Another innovation is driven by the regulations. So generally speaking, there is the two regulations imposed by the Federal Reserve System. Uh, so first, it's called reserve requirement. So which means if you have a thousand dollar deposit, and so instead of lending all total thousand dollars out, you have to follow the re uh, reserve requirement ratio to keep certain of the money in your bank account. Why? The reason because when people depo deposit money in your bank account, you should expect at one point they want to withdraw the money. So you should have some money keeping your bank so that just in case somebody come to your bank to withdraw money, you can pay them. So that's the why the Federal Reserve mandatory require all the commercial bank to keep this reserve. But if you think about if the bank keep this reserve, that means this amount of money they won't be able to use to make the profit, right? And uh, so it's basically like a tax on the deposit, so which is hurting the potential profitability of the bank. So bank doesn't like it. So another in a restriction imposed by the bank is called the interest paid on the deposit. So uh, actually the Federal Reserve uh, require all the big banks cannot pay uh, interest rate on the saving on the uh, checking account. Why? Because if you think about checking account, it's very liquid. People put money in it, they can withdraw any moment. Any moment. That's called checking account. So they are thinking they're gonna use it in the short term. So if you pay a very high interest rate on the saving uh, on the checking account, so that's gonna cause you a problem because the reason you impose the higher interest rate means you're gonna lend the money out to make more make more interest higher interest. So then they give incentive to the bank to borrow money out. Obviously, that's not what we want. Therefore, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, the federal system, federal government require the commercial bank, uh, especially the big one, cannot pay the interest rate to the checking account because they try to avoid they lend out the money to make more profit. And so these two restrictions. So for the bank, what can they do? Yes, the answer is financial innovation. So there was two innovation they use. One is called the money market and mutual fund. So what happened is, uh, uh, you can uh, they will guarantee money and a guarantee interest. So instead, instead of you won't be go, you won't be put your money down as a deposit. Instead, you are buying a mutual fund. So let's say you have five thousand dollars. You buy five for each share of the mutual fund. One dollar. You buy five thousand dollars. So there, as you purchase in this mutual fund, you will have a checkable account. So you can you can make a check to people who need the money, but at the same time you will gain the interest rate because when you when um when you purchase the mutual fund uh money money market mutual fund and you give the money to the bank and the bank have the money to do the investment, make money and then you share part of the profit. So you can see in this way and so since this money is not considered as a deposit, it is not subject to the reserve requirement, right? So then the money uh, the bank can use it to make more money. Another innovation is sweep accounts. So for the sweep accounts it's not dealing with the individual uh, consumer actually is related to the big corporation. So at the end of the day, so if the corporation have actual money, so they will put money in this uh, SWIFT account. So the bank will do overnight 
investment, overnight investment to earn actual interest. And the, being a being a corporation participant into this WIP account, you're actually going to gain the interest. But for the perspective of the banks, and the banks actually, since the this is WIP account, it's not considered as a deposit. So the bank actually going to be able to make actual money in front, uh, uh, by using the money in the SWIP account. So you can see these two methods in financial innovation are developed because uh, tr uh, the bank try to avoid the existing regulation. So after we understand the financial innovation, we went further to look at why the bank is so worried about their profits. So that's why we're going to look at the decline of traditional banking. So the reason they are looking for financial innovation is literally because the traditional borrow lending is no longer making a lot of money for the bank. So as the source of the funds of the borrower, market share has fallen. And so the commercial bank share of the total financial intermediary ads, asset has fallen. And so, but we noticed that during the years, there was no decline in overall profitability. The reason because the financial innovation. And also you can notice that the increase in income from off balance sheet activities, because the bank is no longer just rely on borrowing lending, they actually rely on what I just mentioned about, like a, uh, uh, such as securitization, such as the uh, sweep account, and the monetary mutual fund. So they no longer just rely on uh, borrowing the lending. That's why the uh, the income uh, of the balance sheet activity increased. So let's look at uh, one fact: why we said that the, the demand of the uh, of the commercial banks is uh, the the demand for the borrowing is lower so look at this chart is showing to 1960 to 2017 you can see a big dec uh, significant decrease so the percentage of the share of the total non financial borrowing so non financial borrowing including starting business or you are uh, using the money to buy a house so non financial borrowing so you are not borrowing money to uh to refinance or borrow money to uh, um, buy more stock, etc. So you are actually actually start uh, using the money to start a business to support the physical economy, physical economy. So you can see it is declining. And so uh, the decline in the cost of land. Uh, so for the it, since the declining of the non financial borrowing, it is creating the decline in cost advantage in clearing funds. So the rising inflation led to rising interest rate and the disintermediation and low cost source of fund checkbook deposit declining in, uh, in importance as well. So all two factors contribute to the decline in cost advantage in current funds through the financial uh, commercial banks. And also uh, we saw that commercial bank decline in income advantage on use of their funds as well. The reason is because information technology has decreased need for banks to finance short-term credit needs or to issue loans. So for instance, like Amazon, I just realized that some big furniture, you actually can get a zero interest uh, six month payment through, uh, through the uh, Amazon. So you don't even need to go through your financial institution because they don't even check your credit score. Uh, so they literally just say, okay, if this furniture $100, you can pay, use four months to pay back, every month to pay $25. So they don't even charge your interest rate, they don't charge to check your credit card. So you can see if that's the case, why well, we need the commercial banks. And also the information technology has lower transaction costs for other financial institutions, increasing competitions. And so you can see that not commercial bank can loan money, but also the business, small, uh, other business can offer to like Lenovo. If you buy the computer from Lenovo, usually you can get, a, if that's the first time, you can get a credit card, you can make the 12 month payment and zero interest. So obviously they are competing with the commercial banks as well. And so the bank, uh, how the bank is responding to what we've seen, we discussed about the decreasing demand of the loan, uh, the uh, declining cost advantage, a declining income advantage. So what they did is, first of all, they expand into new and riskier area of lending, like a junk bond. So they are uh, allowing those risky company to uh, issue the bond, offering higher interest rate. And since the bank is part of the uh, process, that means they are taking more riskier asset, uh, riskier uh, taking more riskier activities, and also they are pursue off balance sheet activity. We ex explained it, uh, like the sweep account, like the monetary mutual fund, etc. 
And so uh, that is the, um, the financial innovation and the, the trend of the, uh, of the banking system. Generally speaking, the traditional banking is declining. But the banking system has the answer that is to use the financial innovation.